In John 13, I assume that as the disciples arrived at the upper room where they would be celebrating with Jesus, that that's when he washed their feet. This was an act of humility, an act of servanthood, but maybe more than anything, it was an act of hospitality. See, foot washing was something that was normal in the culture. We've made it a spiritual thing. And if we're going to be honest, it's an awkward thing, right? Like in our culture, foot washing is this spiritual ceremony that we do. It is awkward. It can be uncomfortable. And we're just like, Jesus did it, so we're going to do it. I don't need to name names. There are some of us that don't want our feet seen or touched by anybody, especially not publicly in church. You want me not to come to church? Tell me there's going to be a foot washing service. I will make sure I've got something else going on back then. But in John 13, this was part of life. Foot washing was normal. If you came to someone's house, a servant would wash your feet. They wore sandals and they walked on dirt roads, which means their feet were dirty. Washing someone's feet was the same as when we go in and wash our hands. Now, we love symbolism, but I'm learning that God loves submission. And we are always trying to figure out what something means, but sometimes before we try to figure out what it represents, we need to just see the reality of what it is. The disciples' feet were dirty, and Jesus, according to John 13, 1, loved them and washed them. That that's how he showed his love. <clears throat> Did you know that 30 times the Gospels record Jesus sitting at someone's table to eat with them? 30 times. When we want to be like Jesus, we try to find a street corner to preach on, but what we find out about Jesus is he sat at people's houses and had meals at their tables. Hospitality changes lives. Being welcoming and practical, being generous and kind and selfless, it opens hearts and it provides safety and security that allows people to begin to believe you might love me without hurting me. Think about it. Jesus called Matthew the tax collector. And what's the next thing he did? He went to Matthew's house and had a meal with a whole bunch of sinners and tax collectors. His feet were washed with tears when? When he was sitting at the table of a Pharisee named Simon. It was sitting at a table when the Syrophoenician woman came and asked Jesus to heal her daughter. Jesus did not just sat at tables, but he was constantly being hospitable and practical. He embraced the leper before he healed him. He asked the woman with the issue of blood to tell her story. He even went to Samaria, wore himself out, went the way others wouldn't go, just so he could sit down at a well and talk to a five-time divorced Samaritan woman. He washed the disciples' feet because sometimes love is doing what someone needs you to do. And let me say this. Sometimes ministry is just doing what someone needs rather than what you'd like to do for them. Sometimes holiness and spiritual maturity is found in just being willing to meet a need, even if that need is uncomfortable, even if that need is not how you envisioned your ministry, even if that need is not what you want to do, sometimes that's exactly what you've been called. 